I'm working on a little game at the moment, a little top-down shooter, like COD Zombies, and if I run you and show you what I've got, I have some really basic UI at the moment, and the player can start. I can show you at the moment, I've paused, and I've got some mock data, and they can switch tabs, but you notice a lot of stuff is going out of bounds. Now, I was thinking of using something like Ray GUI, which is a UI kind of library for Raylib, which I'm using Raylib to render their stuff, but it kind of doesn't really fit my needs, and so I want to design a sort of GUI Kind of similar to what you can do in CSS. I specifically want to emulate flex boxes within CSS. So a flex box is kind of like it organizes the contents of within a container automatically. I don't want to obviously do all of it with such like order. I specifically want to do uh, kind of like a flex direction. So we could have one for just column and then a row. Those two would be quite nice. Uh, they could be separate functions within themselves. Uh, I'd want it so the justified content is the main thing I want. So I want it so you can either have like a space between or space around or space evenly. I'm thinking space evenly, so those two, but I think those, so then I can render a nice little shop quite easily. So these will be helper functions. I sort of already have some link so far. So I have a draw button that is kind of emulating Raid UI, but with a bit extra. So you give it the rectangle bounds and you give it the text you want to render. And I get the measure text size because you can do that with Raylib thankfully and then we can get sort of the bounds and then we can get the center so it sort of renders the text center within the button depending on how big it is and if it's clicked we can then highlight the text as well so if we hover over it we're highlighting the color and then we can just return true if they click it so if I get I go on my Odin run on my my project that I have that I can see a highlight and then if I press X it was able to return that true and close the program etc. I did just kind of start it, but you can see it's getting a bit complex, a lot of hard-coded values. I don't want hard-coded values, like, I don't want hard-coded colors as well. Uh, some of these are okay, the player stats within the game are fine, they're, they're okay for now. Uh, but look, I'm going through like this, and but when maybe some of these could be loops, and that I'm just having all these, like, constants and variables declared when I kind of want to hit to handle it, so I'll give it the size of the width and the height, and how much of a padding it wants, and then it will automatically kind of fill it. What's quite challenging is that with these arrays, so if I'm giving it the mock data, which is this JSON, you can see that we have all of this. Do we just force it to use all of this uh, structure or do we make it very general? So you just write an array of strings and such. So it be interesting, but I don't want it to be too close. So it just needs to be quite a simple UI so I can make some kind of base boilerplate kind of stuff, some foundation, and then maybe even have it so it can render a texture underneath once we do that. But uh, we'll just stick to the rectangles and see what we can come up with. I think with the raw button, what I could do is instead, I can also pass it an enum, sort of, so some sort of enum, and this will be if we set up a, like a, a structure which we can call it maybe the flex direction struct, and this will be, oh, an enum, sorry, not a struct, and this will have like left, uh, center, and then right, and that will be the way the text is aligned, especially for the button, so we can then pass that in within our node in here. So if we go, we put the direction or something, or something da, maybe direction keep it full, just to make it nice and clear. We pass that in, then it can be a base align. So if it's center, it will do what it currently does. If not, it just align it to the left. And we'll also perhaps need a, I guess, adding as well. Uh, so if there's a bigger button or not, it's maybe not. That's kind of difficult. But if it's in the left, it will need padding left or the right so i'm not too sure i'll just do it for this now right so now if i give it the enum uh, first it will just default to the left if not we'll go to the center if not then it'll be right and therefore we can assume that the text will be then aligned that way and i've just added a 20 padding we obviously assume that the y will always be sent we don't want the y to change really i don't think and if i now run this and i have it set to right why if i move this over we can see the text is like that. I go back into the main. This time, let's say we set this one to left. And I can also set this one to center just to show you what it looks like. And I now run this. There we go, perfect. So if I want to do a flex box, then give me a space evenly. I'm gonna I will do it by row first, and we'll have to adding a gap. And I guess we can ignore the item width because we'll just get it centered and organize it evenly like that. What I have just now, so we get back on it. Boom, look at that. They organize it by the space evenly on this flex. And I've started to add the background at the moment, which is okay, but it's kind of guesstimating. You can see I have now a flex box function, which is up here, which 
we just give it how much space you want, the size of the item and how many items you have, and then it just goes through and it evenly spaces them. Uh, however, there's still an issue if I go back on to the project and load it up. Uh, we notice that if there's too many items, we can only fill a certain amount. So the rifle, it just goes off screen. But we need a system where they will, if it goes overflows, then it will need to create a new page. So I have at least the basics ready. There's, it was a simple fix or addition where we had an item limit and that if the player sets this item limit because it's an optional parameter, then it will only loop through and get the total size to that mount. And that means that we can fire a restriction in and then when it exceeds it, just reset back to the start. And that means we can hide those values until a button is pressed. And we can see if we go to the code, look, I just provided the four items like, like the pistol because the pistol only had four items to go through which doesn't have one meaning that when we run it they should be the same and for the rifles we should see an overlapping so this is what the pistol looks like and the rifles we can see we have an overlap of the items they're ready for the hidden for when the player can change play uh, pages ideally hopefully that will work quite nice all right i've started to add the buttons but i do discover that there is a bit of an issue when it comes to using this flex system currently that is the fact that well the it obviously sorts it evenly but great but when we're, it doesn't take into account for example the text sort of size it's going from the whatever position of the top left is specifically for text so this could be the center of this container and so very long text will look out of place so there's also a need a system to calculate the center or of the position of a length of an object so actually i do have that so the same with the button when we go up to the draw button the center is the width where we can get from the text size so we'll have to figure it out and get that and then that can be readjusted because currently at the moment i'm kind of just yankily adding it on like oh negative 50 so and so forth uh, to get the position so there's some improvements to be made there so i spent some good time on it let me show you what i've got if i start it boom look at that it's pretty cool we have the weapon details at the bottom the purchase buttons here for now uh, the weapon icon will be here like the the actual like fix a lot of it you can swap between the tabs and if there's a uh, more than four items you can swap between pages and if i click these as well it changes the stats that are temporary pistol and if i purchase one as well it will also remove it and add it to my weapons so that's pretty cool and notice that you couldn't actually see the bottom left so let me hide my character my death uh, this is what i have the fire capacity weight recoil damage and then costers I guess some more details I can think of adding, like stuff like, uh, sort of like maybe reload time, but then you have to have a reload sound. So trying to figure out how to release it will be difficult. Uh, stuff like that, uh, maybe bullet velocity, stuff like that. Um, but yeah, plenty of space for it. As we can see back on, if I load it back up, look, uh, we have all that bottom space, and that purchase button doesn't have to be there either. So I need to uh, figure out where some of this stuff goes but i think the actual layout is actually really quite good and if we change some of the color as well uh to something better maybe render texture instead of just this flat colors but they're really good for now maybe that should be it for going further like release a demo and then beautify because it just needs a function sort of at the moment and alongside it i added like a draw centered text so you give it the position uh, basically the exact same as draw button except we're only centering it and it just you know gets a size and then divides it by two and adds it to position and that gives you the center text just give it the x and y it'll be centered there depending on how long the text is which is okay but i think and i do use it for that icon here uh yes center text but you still have to add like um like when it came to the flex box the flex box is positioned up left of the whatever you're rendering so if i obviously obviously centered it it's not going to be in line with the flex box but so that's where it's not really needed and it's kind of iffy whether the i should just hard code values you can see i'm adding on like values to it and because of like the padding like the padding's obviously getting bigger so you have the main container box and then within that there's a 20 20 pixel padding add on the 20 pixel padding and then if there's another button within that then that needs a 20 Padding, so you see how CSS is uh, quite very layered and uh, it just adds padding, padding, but it's not very simply done. You just add it to a class and it'll add it on top. Uh, it's not something you can really do on this in an in, in engine like that. But here's a good example here with the 
the first container box, which we draw, which is at position 100 X and 100 Y. And when we draw that inner one, the big blue one, 120, because we're adding a 20 pixel adding. And if we look at the this one, which is the one on the right, so that's where the where you can put the buy options in. The more that will then adds on even more padding to it. So you can see it's now it's at 160 because it went from 140 and then the plus 20 pixel padding on the X that adds up to 160. And then we sort of then and then when we when we're dealing with the width, you sort of needed the duck duck padding. Uh is in because the box within it's obviously gonna be, I guess, in width size, 40 pixels smaller, 20 pixels on the left, 20 pixels on the right, so you need to reduce that. And then when it comes to like the buttons, it does get a bit annoying. So yeah, when I flex box, I'm doing grid height, then negative four because it's still the, the 20 pixel padding. The stuff like that is pretty pretty hard to like maintain, I guess. Uh these could all just be declared at the top, so like oh padding for this grid, padding for that grid. And then that makes it clear yeah, how much padding you want for per section by just editing those values. Uh, rather than have them just hard coded on each line. That makes it confusing. But overall, I think this is like pretty good for now. Uh, and I think I'll keep it like that and maybe mess around with some of the colours. Oh, I need to add more button colours. They're just grey by default. And maybe once is if one is selected, it should forever be uh, a permanent colour. Like to show you on the pistol tab, for example. There are plenty of other flex items out there. And that's along it, so the flex wrap and stuff, so it automatically goes to a new line. Uh, the align items, so like this. I think that's a bit too complex for what we want to do. And I think I'd maybe update the flex box so that it handles everything. You give it the position, the width, and then even the padding, and then it will just return you like a structure of those values for each item, and you can just put them in rather than me at the moment adding it on and deducting the width and so on and so forth by manually per flex item so I hope you enjoyed that little video of me just going through and creating a CSS style uh, UI which will be getting improved and maybe comment down below if you want me to make this into a code repository that you can use as well for Odin if you're using Raylib and making a game of it then do comment below because then I can create one I'm I'm not against just releasing that to the public for other people to use and even put their own requests or questions to add to it. So it helps each other. I'll see you in the next one. So do subscribe and wait for more content.